the age-old question, is it worth it, and applied to a device that could be as old as your age. Who here likes to use appliances that are as old as you are? Yeah, it's not just your grandmammy who can appreciate an appliance that lasts for decades. Add retro gamers to that parade, who are prone to talk about CRT TVs with a very high regard. We're talking right up there with the likes of pizza here, folks. And real quick, for those who may not know what a CRT is, it stands for cathode ray tube, AKA old TVs, AKA the big tube TVs that everybody used to have, AKA let's get rid of this old hunk of junk. Who's actually taking these off people's curbs? We are the retro gamers. Now, I can't tell you the number of times I've had to explain that using CRTs for gaming isn't just being a weirdo. And believe me, I'm normally cool with being labeled a weirdo. Even harder is explaining why I have a CRT rotated on its side for vertically oriented games to get the proper resolution. Trust me, it's a thing. Now, while I've made videos on this channel before explaining the benefits of CRT TVs, which consoles to use them on, how to track them down and where to put them, the question I found most people are always left with is, is it worth it? A question that I'm going to try to help you answer. And no, this isn't going to be a I have one, so you should have one too situation. As much as I personally love CRTs, I don't believe these are for everyone. Few things are, even my beloved bananas. They have a particular sweet scent that just doesn't do the job for some people. Okay, so for starters, for a CRT TV to even have a chance of being worth it for somebody, there needs to be some interest to begin with. You're wondering if you're missing out. You won't see me debating over whether or not I want a cheese printer. I don't give a darn, so it's an easy no. Actually, a cheese printer could make my sandwiches a lot more interesting. Okay, bad example. In any case, best way to start determining if a CRT TV is worth it is to go over the benefits and see if any of them have you intrigued. Right out of the gate, one of the biggest positives people will point to with CRT TVs is nearly zero input lag, or to put it more simply, the time between pressing a button and the corresponding action occurring on screen. Now, there is some debate as to how input lag should be defined, but most agree that if you were to define it as literal raw processing latency, then it's zero. Because there's less processing, the image gets out quicker. The point is CRTs are responsive. Press a button and stuff happens right away. That's all you really need to know. Hey, you know what has the worst input lag of all though? Trying to be successful at life, am I right? Try as you might, success seems to always be delayed. As you might imagine, an absence of input lag can be especially useful when playing retro games that often require pinpoint timing and accuracy with your button inputs. Question is, what happens if you play retro games with, oh, I don't know, just a little bit of input lag? Well, quick little story for you. I played Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, one of the best examples for testing input lag, on a modern TV that had 40 milliseconds of input lag. Not to mention the bit of input lag from the NES Mini itself. And I still made it all the way to Mike Tyson. I then got destroyed by Mike Tyson, but that happens on a CRT as well. Input lag on modern displays used to be a much bigger problem when HDTVs were first coming onto the scene. As some of those suckers would have well over 100 milliseconds of input lag. Nowadays, most TVs have what's called game mode that reduces a lot of the process the TV does in order to reduce input lag, and you can find some TVs with as little as 10 milliseconds or fewer of input lag. The key is to figure out how sensitive to input lag you are. 
People have gone to therapy for such things. And what are we talking about today? Issues with your parents? Maybe childhood trauma? Nope, we're talking about playing the Turbo Tunnel and Battletoads on a Samsung Plasma TV. One of the best ways to determine how sensitive you are to input lag is to turn game mode on and then off and see how noticeable the difference is to you. In fact, another quick little story for you. I was kid sitting my friend's kids a while back and when everybody was asleep, I secretly turned game mode on for all the inputs on their TV without telling them. And when I asked them about it weeks later, yep, they didn't notice a darn thing. And get this, we're still friends. I like less input lag, they don't seem to care. And somehow we can enjoyably make it through a dinner all together. I've found there's perfectly healthy other ways to express your disappointment with people. So if reducing input lag has you curious, or you maybe want to see if it can help you tackle some of the harder games in your collection more effectively, then great, but just know that plenty of people still enjoy games with input lag and especially with a lot of the measures in place that can greatly reduce it even without a CRT, like using a computer monitor. A lot of it comes down to equipment, which also adds a bit of input lag, it's just a matter of reducing it down to an acceptable level. So be aware of those variables as well. And remember, if you're not bothered by a little bit of input lag, it doesn't make you any less of a gamer. Heck, it's not like anybody would ever know anyways, so you might as well do what you want. Invite me over and I will turn game mode on on your TV when you're not looking though. It's kinda my thing. All right, moving on from input lag, next we have scan lines, a visual effect that could be described as having blank black lines running horizontally that separate the lines running horizontally horizontally that make up the actual game visuals. Fans of starting a sentence with, well, actually, will sometimes point out that, well, actually, technically what people are referring to as scan lines are actually blank lines. But you could actually, well, actually, that well, actually, by saying that the blank lines actually are scan lines, they're just blank scan lines. In any case, sorry to disappoint anybody who had a well actually comment queued up. And eh, they'll probably find something else to well actually, they always do. Naturally, the scan line visual effect is something that there's been many attempts to recreate, but much like your mama's famous cornbread, these attempts are just never the same. And for as many attempts at replicating scan lines as there are, there's even more opinions on how good or not good each attempt looks. Of course, the more expensive devices tend to create scan lines people are more fond of, but not always. I personally prefer the look of scan lines on a CRT above all else, but again, I understand not everybody does. Some people don't like scan lines at all. As far as what's more authentic to the look of these games, well, game artists knew that their games would likely be played on CRTs when they made them, but as far as whether they look more or less authentic with them, I've seen people argue for both sides. So. I suppose you could say it's debatable, but even if it wasn't debatable, who cares? You should just play the games in whatever way looks best to you. Unless you share it online, nobody is gonna know you play with or without scan lines. Well, probably not. No guarantees, I guess. What's important to know is that if you are a fan of the look of scan lines, the ones you'll see on a CRT TV are different from the ones simulated on more modern TVs or monitors, and it might be enough of a reason to want a CRT TV. Next up, we have resolution. Pretty simple explanation here. The resolutions of most CRT TVs more closely match the native resolutions of most older game consoles. After all, most of these older consoles were built with these older TVs in mind. The concern with more modern HD TVs is that they stretch out and distort the resolutions of these older game consoles to fit the TV's higher resolution. When they were designing HD TVs in the late 2000s, they weren't thinking about your Super Nintendo. They should have been, though. Of course, there's certainly different equipment and ways to have the resolutions of older consoles upscaled properly to a more modern HD television, so it's not really any kind of deal breaker necessarily. 
but you may prefer the plug and play method of a CRT and perhaps it just feels like a more natural fit. Like talking with your oldest relatives about how grocery stores constantly change which aisle things are on. Of course, you'll want to consider which consoles you have to play on a CRT as well. Typically, any consoles from the N64, PS1, Sega Saturn generation and older get the green light for CRT use. The PS2, Xbox, and GameCube generation are a bit more debatable. My stance has always been that you don't need a CRT for those consoles, but they'll look good on it either way. Personally, having my PS2 hooked up to a CRT is worth it for the Time Crisis games alone. Yeah, you'll need a CRT TV to play light gun games as well, since the functionality of those games was built around the technology of a CRT. There are some options for playing these games on an LCD screen with specialized devices you can purchase, but again, some may just prefer a CRT to be a more natural fit. I'd also like to quickly mention that you can, and some people certainly do, use more modern HD capable consoles on CRTs as well. Sometimes you need special converters to do this, but sometimes just a standard cable is all you need. All right, but now it's time to talk about the biggest reason I see people give for why they don't want a CRT in their home, and that would be how big they are. These suckers can weigh upwards of a hundred pounds and even get into the hundreds of pounds territory. Naturally, wherever you put them will take up a lot of space as well. And I will mention real quick, in the odd case you do like huge stuff in your house, you are in business, my friend. Here's the thing though. Typically, you're not going to be moving these around very much, and if you don't change addresses, Perhaps not at all outside of when you first acquire it. Just find a good spot and then leave it there. But be sure to bring a friend to help you, otherwise it may not be the spot you want. Hey, remember when I said to bring a friend? Well, I'm always one step ahead. And a bad situation has turned into a good situation. As far as finding space for it, what's interesting about that is... Back when CRT TVs were the norm, everybody had at least one, and we seemed to have space for them then. I suppose part of the issue could be that the main spot in your living room is now occupied by your more modern TV, so you need to find a different spot for it. And depending how the people you live with feel about it, that spot could be anywhere that's out of sight. Most modern interior design these days tends to not cater well towards these monsters, and so some modern furniture can't even physically support it without collapsing, so you'll want to have both the space and means to accommodate one. Then there's the matter of actually finding one, and I say find and not buy because you can indeed find these for free. On the side of the road, in a family member or friend's basement, there were so many of these back in the day that it's no surprise there's now plenty of people trying to get rid of them. It is getting harder as the years pass though, as people throw them out, recycle them, and heck, us retro gamers snatch them up. That said, about a couple months before making this video, I was able to get one for free off of Craigslist, and it had been sitting on there for a month and a half, too. Who the heck still uses Craigslist, you might say? Well, the type of person who would give away a CRT for free, that's who. Depending where you live, your luck may vary as well, but with some patience, keep an eye out and you'll have a chance at getting one for little to no money. So don't get too discouraged. All right, but now it's time for this video's question. And for this, I thought it would be both fun and helpful for everyone to give their personal reasons for justifying why they either have or don't have a CRT TV. That way, those who are still debating this might be able to find some common ground with some of you to help make their decision. So whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment and I will see ya in the next video. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh my goodness. Do you need my help? Boy, do I ever. I ate my banana and now I got no banana left. Could you be a sweetheart and get me another one? Sure, sweetie. Just a second. Boy, am I glad she came home. He's the red
Talking about video games, he's the red 